This is your weekend market recap for Saturday, April 23rd, 2022. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is my channel to help investors and traders develop a probability-based mindset to succeed. Also try and keep friends informed of what's going on in the markets and the economy, and also a little real estate content as well. This is Dan Max, DXP Realty, aka The Trading Agent, and this is your weekend market recap for Saturday, April 23rd, 2022. Years flying by. Let's get into it. First off, always start on the Discord room. If you have any questions about this video, concerns, thoughts, or maybe even ideas relating to some of the stocks or the markets, please check out the link in the description below of the video. Always here to ask, uh, answer questions and help out if needed. I'd like to thank uh, a lot of people who started, who just, just recently subscribed and just started uh, jumping into the Discord room. I want to explain to people again, like you know, some of the stuff that we're predicting ultimately is... Um, it's great. You know, it's one of those things where it's it's good for somebody newer to see that there is an ability to predict what's going to happen in the markets with probabilities. However, my goal is to not really give you the easy answers. I mean, you can copy me. I, I really don't care. But I think a lot of people really want to learn how to do this so that they can take, you know, take the skills and implement them on their own. You know, the saying is, you know, teach a man to fish, he'll you know, live forever, you know, versus give him a fish. You know, the same kind of thing here. You want to learn how to do this because ultimately everybody's different in trading. Personalities dictate trading styles and how things are going to run for them personally. So on that note, let's get into uh, I'm going to start on Twitter real quick. If you're not familiar, I try to post a lot of my live trade alerts on Twitter. It's one of those things where I'm going to post them to my Twitter page and then I post them to the uh, Discord room. And on the Discord room, it's alerts and trades. They're all in here. Now, again, I try to do them as best as I could. I used to do videos for the alerts, but they were just lag time too much, way too, way too late. You know, I want people to be able to see very quickly that, hey, we're on, we're looking at this, we're looking at that versus recording a video, creating the graphics, thumbnails, uploading to the internet. I mean, as you can see or think about it, it, it definitely is a delayed reaction. So on that note, <clears throat> Bitcoin. What have we said, folks? We said this was not bullish. This, this action was bearish because you had a look above range highs and failed. And one of the things, if you look at the weekly chart, you saw that it was like indecision. And you could see it here. You, you went above the VAT zone. Remember, volume at price. If you are not, if you don't have that out in your charts, please add it. It tells you where the volume is going off and what price. So there's a ton of buyers and sellers in the forty-six to 45,000 range. And look what happened here. We got into it and immediately... Got up, hammer, long wick, red candle, wick, 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 boom. Once you got below it, you had to set the stop. And this candle right here was actually a bull trap, which is interesting because to see bull traps like that near the highs are really tricky. No, there's no certainty. Again, I say it's a probability game. You're you're trying to execute probabilities to the best of your advantage and based on sentiment, the action, the charts, everything going on. That would have been tricky. Again, now look at what's happened here. I mean, you have this trend line here. It's not perfect, but look what's going on. I mean, you're holding above it. I don't really have a good feel on Bitcoin long term. I think it is a digital currency, but I feel like all digital currencies are going to run into some problems. Not because they're not sustainable, just because retail's all in on them. You know, I don't... I mean, I personally know everybody that I know that began trading started, tra you know, in the last year or two. Not like they came into commodities and started trading. No, they came into Bitcoin and all these digital currencies. And so not to call those people dumb, but they're the targets. They're the targets of smart money. And if the futures market and Bitcoin, the, the market makers of Bitcoin want this thing to get down, I think they're going to do it. So if that is the case, your first support is 35000 Next would be near thirty. Personally, I need more data. I need this trend line to hold first. I need more data then you would need to break that downtrend. Apologize if that's not really what people want to hear, but that's sometimes the truth. Like I always tell people, sometimes knowing what not to trade is just as important as knowing what to trade because there are times where you, have, you can't lie to yourself and act like you know what's going to happen all the time. All right, let's start on the bond market TLT because I've said this is very important, what happens down here ultimately for the market. The market has priced in seven rate hikes. The 10-year went from 1 to 5 to almost 3%. OPEX... Post OPEX, turnaround Tuesday, doji, pop. Man, professional gap. We filled the gap. We talked about that, put out the alerts. And then yesterday was just a, man, a long doji. 
let's always zoom out and that's what i always tell people if like if you're trading for swing trading is based on short-term charts please zoom out as you can see it's like a head and shoulders top looks like it confirmed obviously now we're at channel lows <clears throat> i think we're gonna hold here for the short term short term meaning next couple months i you know going into an election i just don't see how the feds want to like run rates too high market's going to price it in recession talk is now picking up so rates should start to go lower and the tlt go higher it's really that simple if you're in this trade you have to watch the 119 area if it breaks the 119 area it gets back below this low i mean it's game over not game over ultimately but just watch how it closes now i tell people this all the time like intraday traps are are natural so it's where we close like if you can if you get down below 118 119 118 and then close back in it that to me would be a bear trap at this point i think bonds are bottoming what do we always talk about when you're in a nice channel the blowout of the channel is usually the exhaustion move so pretend this was an up channel and you did the same thing you had a blowout straight up like say like tesla real quick i'm just going to jump into like an example so you can see that's the end of the up move and the example was here you had a nice sweet channel up and then boom blow out up that was the top same thing kind of with tlt i apologize for bouncing around but i think people need to see this for educational purposes you have a nice channel again and we're breaking out of the channel that's usually the exhaustion move that's the peak of uh near term i mean it signals typically exhaustion because now breaking out of the channel everyone's getting super excited and dumb money is just chasing it and that's usually what the market makers are unloading into is dumb money dollar what did we talk about you know we said on the monthly again we always start on the monthly like this zone in the 27s is going to be a problem we're up there we're at an old 0.618 on the fibs we'll see what happens here i mean again i don't really care too much about the dollar other than the volatility in it it seems to be trending higher the dollar is really dead it, it's not acting like it now keep in mind when debt gets destroyed and debt delivers it does buy dollars because the problem with it is that you have to take usually a lot of the debt in the world is priced in dollars and so when that shit gets destroyed people get paid in dollars so there's an actual correlation between debt destruction and dollar rising we'll see what happens because i don't you know i'd like to say I know what's going to happen next, but I don't. I'm just playing the probabilities. I'll just keep it that simple. I think the dollar could chop and go higher. The VIX, you're welcome. You're absolutely welcome. Because I put out an alert on this and said, watch this action. Because we had the wick. We closed right back at 20, whatever, 30. And then the next day, we went below it and boom, screaming higher. Now, I'm not saying that I nailed everything perfectly. And I, I typically don't. Again, I'm, a, I'm human. I'm not a computer. But we did talk about this in the Discord room. I'm not going to get into the Discord. Go check the alerts and trades. And we talked about it. So now what? That is a big green candle. Oof. What's the worst case scenario or best case is that for bulls, like stock bulls, is that we have a outside reversal and come back down. Could this be the start of major pain? Could this? I mean, you're seeing higher lows. So here, think about like 2020 or... It even let me see how far the VIX will go back. I know it goes back to the 20s. Uh, could this be the start of a move up into the 50? Because remember, 2001, and I, I tell people this all the time. Like this feels very reminiscent of 2001. Years ending in one and two or bull bear markets for tech. Look what's happening here. Like could it be some sort of test up into the 48s? But I tell people all the time. Look what happened between 2002 and 2003. The VIX stayed elevated. It stayed. Notice this upper like this. The lower bound was much higher than it was during bull markets previously. If that's the case. Volatility is here to stay. I don't want to be surprised if this spikes up into the 30s or 40s. Now, would it? Is that a guarantee? No. But however, what I think will happen is that you're going to get these. I guess you call them like birthing pains before the blow off. So you'll get a pop, drop, pop, drop, pop, drop, and then boom. Maybe. If the bear, if there is a bear market, which I'm about 95% sure of, because if you, when we get in the spy, you'll see, or we'll just get in the spy now. So look at the VIX, <clears throat> the monthly chart, nice uptrend, nice, nice channel up, channel up, blow out. Remember we talked about channels, 
and then the blowout. I mean, a lot of lines here, I know that. But this move, I mean, it took years. I mean, this is crazy how you did a COVID, boom, and a slingshot higher. I think we've priced in everything. Now watch the lows, like the four. I mean, just put a round numbers in, you know, put 400 in on the SPY. Needs to hold that because that's old with support, I would say, resistance area in like the 400s. I know people say that's such a wide range, but it's like, can you see it? If you can see it here now, let me zoom in the daily. You might see actually what looks like a super complex head and shoulders. Left shoulder, monster head, right shoulder. Now everyone's saying, look, there's a left shoulder head and the head and shoulders low. And it's like, mm, I don't know. Remember, this is the mountaintop. You, have, you know, you can yodel your way all the way up this motherfucker. <laughs> This is the mountaintop. If this is the if this is the lower high, and I've been through many bear markets, then this is game over for the market. And it could be a year, it could be two years, it could be six months. It really depends on how fast things play out. Pray for quickness because it actually it's easier to resolve. Time people don't want a two or three year bear market. That shit sucks. It takes forever to play out. At this point, you need to hold four twenty three. Next would then be four ten. Zoom out. You can see the 360s would be my first real support. Maybe even, like I said, 400. There's some support here. Just look at the volume at price zones. There's a big vacuum here in the low 400s. I'm interested to see if it holds it. I mean, that might sound contradictory, but the reason why I say 400 is because usually big round numbers become important. And if you think about big round numbers, you can even think about this week. I mean, literally, what was the high? Like 450. 450, I think 20, or 450 one or something stupid. Big round numbers. The market really likes to track those out, knock out options based on those numbers. So, again, I'm bearish until bullish. You know, like there's nothing. We talked about this action was not bullish. Like it felt like a bear market rally because it was a straight line move. You had the novice gap, professional gap, chop, earnings pop, slam. It's not bullish, y'all. It's not bullish. Well, and this is the culprit. If the tech market, higher interest rates are going to affect tech long term, it is bearish. Here's your left shoulder, here's your head, here's your shitty right shoulder. We had a looking like a head and shoulders bottom here. Left and right shoulder, here's the head, and then boom, you broke the shoulder line. This is this is the part that you got to be aware of. Nice channeling up, and boom. Look what's happened. We haven't seen this in a while. And this is where usually you had like one test of the 20 month. Multiple tests of the 20 month, and now it's breaking. Get the fuck out of tech. Telling y'all, tech is not looking good for the long term. Tech, if you, again, I hate to do this and make these videos long, but if you're not familiar with how tech goes and cycles, I mean, it took 17 years to just get back to even on some of the tech names. You don't know who's going to survive. I'm assuming Google, maybe Microsoft, maybe Apple. I don't know, but new players always emerge. Like, that's the market. Tech looks like shit going lower. I would say near term. Sorry, I began for the sloppy charts, but I just leave the channels up there. I would think this guy, once it breaks this 324 area, your next support is in the 300 area. I mean, just keep it that simple. I'm going to clean these lines off. Again, people who have clean charts aren't, aren't using the past as a tool. That's what I always tell people. Again, when I zoom in, it's not so dirty. But you can see this old channel, trend line, whatever. Comes into this next. That's what I'd be watching. It's really that simple. And if it does hold 300, it's probably due to bounce. Again, I always tell people, like, straight line moves, like, get the hell out of here. If you think everything's going to the moon or go to the ground in a straight line, you need to anticipate levels that are bounce. Support equals resistance. And if you're not familiar with that, I'm going to, like, pull you right into the video that I want you to, to watch. <clears throat> right here. Urban Forex, Mastering True Support and Resistance. Watch this video. You'll uh, appreciate it, no doubt. All right, <clears throat> let's continue on. IWM, I mean, this is one of the things we said, the IWM leads. It peaked first in November. See that? Remember, look at the SPY. Peaked in, uh, I think it was like December, early uh, end of the quarter, end of the year. Remember, IWM peaked here. If the IWM typically leads, 
We got some major issues here because it bottomed here shortly in March and it looked like, hey, maybe we're bull market was on, but look what's going on here. This thing is not getting off the floor. It looks really dead. That is not bullish. If you think the IWM looking dead is a good thing, you got fucking problems, man. You got, no. You want to see small caps lead. They're the biggest, they're the riskiest shit, so they deserve to lead, typically. Now again, mega caps can lead in certain times, but the biggest risk on times are when IWM leads. Gold, we watched the previous videos. We said, watch out for the 20, 20, 2011 highs. We hit them again this month and we failed. And it's this red line. It translates onto right here. We'd said, hey, watch this on Monday. And fuck, did it not just get slammed? That's why I did the video on Tuesday. I'm like, because this is a lower high. And now what happens? We're at the 50 day. I think we're getting back down to say 170s. I've. <clears throat> I've always told people, like, you want gold to climb the wall of worry. You don't want every freaking person you know saying, buy gold, buy gold, buy gold, because the powers that be know how to shake the shit out of people. And if that's the case, you go, well, where do you pull them back, Dan? Where do you think we're going to pull back? I don't know for anything for certain, but I would be looking again. Remember I said 170 on the daily? It's the 20 month. You know, maybe we hit back to, I can see a little trend line here. Maybe it plays out here in May or June in 170s. Now, people are like, oh, that's a long time away. Yeah, it is. And the charts don't go in a straight line. It just You can't have that mindset. Like, what gold could do, and I mean, literally drawn this, it could just chop, 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 and maybe it gets down to 170. I mean, here, let me redraw it for folks. I mean, maybe it could be as ugly as this, and this is not what most of my friends want to hear, and I'm a, I'm a gold bull long term. Maybe it just looks like this. And then it's just this, and then it, at the end of the quarter, it just bottoms, and then boom. That's when the move starts. And that move could be one of those things where I tell people, like, could it be the start of the bull market? I'd like to think so, but this is the hardest part. I think, can I pull up the GLD? I forget. Oops. People don't realize that when gold bottoms, uh, I don't have it, unfortunately. Um... From 2001 to 2003, I mean, it was really sloppy and choppy. I mean, it actually even held, like, went nowhere for a while. And I always tell people, like, the biggest shakeouts lead to the biggest moves. You know, is this current action the big chop out? I hope so. Because, again, if it's, I mean, this is a big cup and handle. No one's going to argue. That's why I'm bullish long term. Play out chop out and then go man you're gonna frustrate every bull they're gonna give up every bear is gonna be confident this thing will go absolutely bonkers gold will be at 5,000 at some point it's just when no brainer buy zone we've been watching this area again lower high said the same thing with silver professional gap put out the video on the commodities oh shit moment everyone's going well, where do you think you're going my first support is in the 20s if I had a guess of some sort of back end range, if there was like a impulse like puke, I would look down into here the sixteen seventeen range. Now again, I think it could chop out and go, but that's just what it is. GDX, man, I told y'all, I told a lot of folks, you gotta be fucking careful. We got up into the blue zone, and everyone's like, "Well, what? Oh, well, you you got over 40. and I'm like, "Yeah, I." I know was, that was the first step, but you needed to ultimately get over this blue zone, which was in the 41s. Fail. Now, again, I like miners long-term, but not now. We've drawn the fibs. <clears throat> I mean, ideally, you'd like to get it back. I mean, pray. If you are if you covered your call, if you sold cover calls and you're hedged and you're just more in cash on this stuff, you love this. You just love it. You just let, you're like, pull back as hard as you want. You don't care. It's the people who are screaming the loudest that nothing can go down are the ones who are all in all the time. And you can sense that. Like think about the people you follow on Twitter, stock twits, the ones that are screaming for higher prices always as something starts to look technically damaged are the ones who took no profits. And as soon as it gets to a certain level, they go quiet because they lost all their gains. And, but they'll say we'll win in the future. And it's like, your goal is to win in the now live in the present moment. And sometimes the action isn't what you want it to be. And you can blame the feds, you can blame everybody, but you're trying to do what the market's doing. And manipulation is a part of the game. If you don't think the markets are manipulated, well then it's a fucking casino. Get out of here with this stupid, that's just stupid. Of course it's regular. It's rigged. GDXJ, same kind of thing. I, mean, I like it long term. 
<clears throat> worst case scenario at this point, I think you're going to come back down into the upper 30s, low 40s. I mean, again, if you hedge took profits and are comfortable, you're loving this. I mean, because again, the bigger the shakeout, the bigger the move. I say that all the time. Think about it. It took tech 16 years to go bottle rocket move up and then it did it went straight line move higher and every tech name got absolutely fucking nuts what's next i don't know other than doesn't look bullish aem man we talked about this range high and it literally hit it to a t professional gap down chop big red Gap down, boom. Has to hold the 50 day. It's probably oversold. Maybe it's due to bounce. Same thing, AG. I mean, I love these stocks. I mean, I absolutely love these stocks long term. And I'm so thankful I hedged and took profits. And because I'm like, I'm just sitting here like, in my mind, please crush these things. Give me a price that makes no sense to the, anybody because I'll buy it. And I won't think twice about it because I'll use it with a stop. I mean, shit, give me back the $5. I wouldn't even care. No, ideally, it's probably going to be where? It's gonna oh shit and everyone's like why are you drawing this stuff and it's like again because it didn't become apparent that the shit was gonna break down until this week but i would look at the tens again anywhere in the 10 range 10 10 10 10 next oh man newmont i told you motherfuckers no i'm just kidding like a royale with cheese one of the things that we were talking about was like man i don't trust this move like we're back up near the highs in in newmont and gold wasn't sustaining Thought it was an M, but actually it was just like a bull trap. Nice doji, professional gap, and then their earnings were honestly their earnings were shit. Year over year, mediocre growth. They need gold prices to go much higher to really justify this action. So if you're a long term bull on Newmont, hopefully you saw this action and you didn't just tuck your head on your ass and just bury yourself in your own ignorance this looks bad i mean pray it again i'm looking at the end of june the end of the quarter for playing out like could it get back in the 60s 50s if it does be thankful that you saw these videos and you're aware of that kind of shit pass same thing slam back testing trend line and, and again that's why i leave these trend lines and you're like oh your charts are so dirty Look where it literally bounced. This is an old trend line. Boink. Bounced. We'll see what happens. Again, pray for the low 20s. Let's get into some of the names that we owned a ton of earlier this quarter or earlier in the year. X. We bought it in the 18 area on the monthly chart. Now, again, if people notice my swing trades, where do they always start? This is the monthly. Big chop zone. Held the 20 month there in red. You can see it. Popped. Perfect. Perfect. Ran up. What did it hit? Oh, it hit the 200 month. Boom. And now again, I started getting out in the mid 30s because I saw the monthly downtrend. But I always knew the 200 month was in play. M, chop. What did we say? Once you break the 20 day, it's dead. Well, folks, it's dead. And and not again like dead for the long run, but just the the bull mark the boom the easy bull move is over. I mean that's what I'm that's all I'm trying to say here. Now what? Pray for the upper. 20s low 30s I mean, it's that simple valet this is one that we caught in the 11 and 12 range and ran up into the 20s fucking love it this thing tends to bull trap and bear trap at the highs here's your bull trap and here's your bear trap now it's murdered and now first support man it should hold the 100 200 day but guess what ain't nothing certain about anything i mean pray now again i'm saying a lot of pray because as a long-term bull in this stuff, I want cheaper prices. I don't want prices that take time to chop out. Like, chop out or, sucks. There's two kinds of corrections. Price and time corrections. Time correction sucks. Price corrections are way better. Like, get it get it over with. Rip the Band-Aid off. Watch for the 13, 14 range. I don't know exactly, but it could be due to bounce. CCJ, I warned Uranium folks. Like, you guys are... You guys seem just as dumb as like the Bitcoin bulls and the 66,000, like calling for 100,000. Now, again, I'm not bearish long term on uranium, but I, I mean, I posted to a ton of people on Twitter, like watch the 50% fib. Again, I'm always starting out on the monthlies. This is major resistance here. Look at all these wicks in the zone. We hit it and of course it fucking backs off. Now, again, not bearish long term, but watch for dips. Pray for the low 20s. I mean, there's a lot of 
potential here if you can just let trades come to you. If you can't, man, you're just trading so hard. You're going to hate it. Let the shit come to you. CF and Mosaic, I warned people. My buddy Jack in Colorado said, I don't like this action. And then boom, again, commodities. Once you saw the action, you had to be wary that it was coming for everything. CF, I warned this one should be like taking out new highs and it pulled back. And of course, I mean, look at the monthlies. I mean, I'm not, don't need to look at the monthly mosaic, but they all look like this. This move is dangerous. It's not sustainable. So what do you want now? If I'm the market maker and I unloaded my inventory at the highs to dumb asses who are chasing, probably waiting for the 70 range, maybe even the 655. You know, like it doesn't, these fibs line up because the algorithms run off the Fibonacci's, folks. I hope people realize that. Look, notice how these boxes in this area all line up and it's like well no one ever watches the monthly chart and it's like that's what they want you to do is not look at the stuff that matters so i'd be watching this now again i don't know if it gets back there tomorrow next week next month it could be just as simple as a downtrend near term meaning bullish long-term excess has to be worked off maybe that's the best way to describe it Tech, this has been the easiest shorts, my friends. We shorted AMD up here, sold naked calls. Boom. See you later. Where's it going? Probably down in the 70s and 80s range. We called the top here, hitting the channel high. We talked about the head and shoulders top. I mean, tech has just been a wreck. And that's why I keep telling people, like, don't own it. Leave it the fuck alone. Apple. They got earnings coming up. I'm not really sure what's going to happen now. It's getting really sloppy and choppy. We started shorting some, took some off debating to let some ride through earnings our cost basis is good uh, we'll see it just it'll all be on how i feel i mean if it's down a ton going into earnings i'll probably take some off if you are in this trade and following do the same like earnings is coming just be aware take some off because they will try to pump the numbers they will somehow be they will somehow manufacture a big beat and they have a ton of cash and in near term people just I love, 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 love Apple. Long term, they're probably not going to love, 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 love it. MicroStrategy, watch out. I mean, it looks like Bitcoin. I mean, you're at the trend line. Break the trend line, goodbye. It's really that simple. Roblox, oh, they're going to get bought out someday. But this thing has been just donkey, 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 donkey. Watch the lows in the 30s. I think it's a buyout potential, but it just if the market's kind of shitty, it might not go anywhere for a while. Just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind good old tesla i'm telling you guys long-term bulls you're just you're banging your head up against the wall i know it looks bullish at times but this what do we say this is the blow off move i mean look at the monthly like how how does it feel to look at this chart and go yeah there's more in it no i mean it just and i mean no meaning let it consolidate it's got a price in the worst case scenarios for the future, it priced in the best. Worst case, I have no clue. I have no clue. I like Elon. I like what he's doing. But this downtrend on the monthly is in play. If you break this freaking up channel, adios. And I and again, that's where I'm just, I'm not like saying go out and short it. I'm just saying long term, I'm not bullish on it. I wouldn't want to own it. If you think of trading as opportunity cost, do you want to buy the backside of the mountain or do you want to buy the trail leading up to the mountain? The trail leading up to the mountain is the commodities market, I think, honestly. But even then, there's going to be some up and downs. We'll see. Let's get into a few names that I always just could run through because I know people watch them. Pen Gaming, thing sucks. I mean, it's going nowhere. March Madness couldn't get anything. It's probably going back to, I mean, it's got a whole 35. Just keep it that simple. Uh, UTHR, we like this one because it's been technical. I hope people watch it. Very, very technical. Easy, actually, to trade. Double bottom. Held the 20 day, can't get over the 200 day. I mean, if you saw it on Friday, you could have shorted that. Now down to 183, pretty simple. Man, EXPI, I own a ton of this for the long run. I mean, obviously, I was not buying it up in the 90s. Been trying to buy it down here in the low upper 20s to low 20s, and now it's at 15. I've got some that I can't run cover calls on, unfortunately, and hedge, but. I like it long term. I know we're doing well. I mean, we're destroying every other brokerage. I know that for a fact. It's just, this is the thing about the markets. Fundamentals don't matter, folks. I hope people understand that sometimes. All about momentum. All right, let's get into the XOP and ExxonMobil because these are the big dogs. 
that I tried to warn people. And again, where do we start out on? This is a monthly. So we're at the IPO price, volume at price zone. We're at the 0.382 or at the 100 month. I'm like, dude, watch this thing for a short. I think it got right to the 0.8382. Yeah, I got a little bit over it. Whatever. Good enough for government work. You zoom in. Keep in mind, I've been on top of this thing and I haven't been trading it all the time, but what did we say? This action was like super stretchy, getting tired. Boom. Down below the 20 day. Now what? 20 days resistance, 50 day support. Watch the 50 day after that. Could go sideways and chop. I mean, take take notes. I need to write that down for myself. 50 day on the XOP, just to remind myself that, that alert. I already kind of knew that, but I mean, it's the old trend channel. And then again, if you got anywhere in the 140s, one down to 126, it's probably due to bounce, then it could pop. I think it's going to go lower in time, though. I think this is too much too fast. Exxon Mobil, same kind of thing. Way too much, way too fast. Breaks to 20 day, goodbye. I mean, this thing. I mean, I told people I want it back in the 70s. This thing went bonkers. Now, is oil the future? I don't know. Oil shortages? I know. War, all the stuff? I know. But it's priced in. Priced in in the near term. We'll see what happens. I think, ultimately, there are pullbacks. You can play them however you want. This helps. Again, check out the Discord room. Link is in the description below. Slap a like on it. I appreciate everybody. I'll hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, stop by the Discord room. A link is in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support more free content, your PayPal link is in the description as well. I appreciate your continued support of the channel.